everybody, Jamin here from Game Show, and as you can see, I'm not actually in the studio. I'm actually in San Francisco for the Game Developers Conference, but that doesn't mean that we can't do a vlog this week. We actually have something a little bit special for you, an interview with Robin Honecky, who was the uh, producer on Journey and co-founded a company called Phenomena and now teaches at UC Santa Cruz. I had a great conversation with her a couple weeks ago when I was also traveling to Las Vegas at the DICE Conference, and we talked about what it's like to start a new, uh, a new property and what it's like to make make the transition from being a game designer into the world of academia. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you all in a bit. Well, we're here at the DICE Conference in Las Vegas. And uh, for folks who don't know maybe who you are, give me a little bit about your background and how you got to be here. Sure, so I started off as an artist. I really wanted to be an artist and a poet when I was a kid. <laughs> And then I went to school and fell in love with computers, and I ended up in graduate school as a computer scientist. There's so poetry in computer science. There is science. poetry in code. That's right. Not a lot of people see that. It has its own meter. It's and true. <laughs> <laughs> and the computer often tells you that your poetry sucks. <laughs> but I really loved computers, and I was kind of nerding out in that space, working on robots and thinking about artificial intelligence. And I went to a conference for AI nerds, and I met Will Wright who had just released The Sims and was talking about some of the AI uh you know, underneath the hood there. Okay. We got to be talking and he said, wow, you think like a game designer. <laughs> you should do that. And I said, well, psh, you know, of course I'm a gamer. I've always played games. Yeah. But do I want to, ah, and then it just sort of was like a little earworm. You well, know, usually like the, head, the creator of The Sims tells yeah. you you should be a game designer. It's exactly. usually pretty, pretty good advice. <laughs> I guess so. So I took it and I ended up actually going to work on The Sims 2 and that was my first job. I worked on The Sims 2. I worked on an expansion pack called Open for Business. Okay. And then I got promoted pretty quickly and I ended up being the lead designer on a title called My Sims mm -hmm. which was Sims for the Wii <laughs> <laughs> which um, was actually called The Revolution when it first came out. I we remember that. super excited about I remember that. I'm working on The Revolution <laughs> and then to have to go say I'm working on The Wii. You know? <laughs> of course it became a huge success. The, yeah. the Wii was really really successful and My Sims uh, as a franchise did huge numbers so that was really great and then I ended up working on uh, Boom Blocks with Steven Spielberg two of those games. Uh, Boom Blocks and Moonbox Bash Party. Okay. And then after that, I was thinking about where do I want to go and what I want to do with my career. I was talking to the people at Bungie, actually, on Destiny. And I also started talking to some friends of mine at that game company, which was really tiny. Yeah. At the time, it was just five people. So they said, we really want to do this new game. Genova has this really awesome concept. He wants to come talk to you about it. So he talked to me about it. And I was like, I'm down. Let's do it. So I was the executive producer of Journey, and so I was you an opportunity to work on Destiny. That was the other job. <laughs> Those were the two jobs, you know, Journey and Destiny. Yeah, that's but really funny. I had to send the bunch of guys, and they're like, "Sorry, I decided to go to this really tiny studio and take a pay cut." <laughs> <laughs> I'd like literally the, the office when I went to do my first interview. Their office is now it's a meeting room at Sony Santa Monica, or where the old Sony Santa Monica yeah, building yeah. was. It was like five people crammed into like a closet. Right. It was, I was like, this is where you work? This is where Flower came from? That's I can't believe this. So funny. Yeah, so, but very now, different you know, games. very different <laughs> games, very different games. So I worked on that for three years, and then after Journey was finished, um, I decided to move back to San Francisco. And me and my friend Martin Middleton, who mm -hmm. was at TGC for six years, um, decided to start Phenomena. And right. so we made a little company, and now we're working on two games. Uh, they're both announced, although they're both still kind of under wraps. One is called Luna, mm -hmm. and that's a sort of a fairy tale. It's like a folk story. And then we also have a game called Watam, which we just announced at PlayStation Experience, which we're working on with Kate. Takahashi. Who is Keita Takahashi for those who don't know? Keita Takahashi made my favorite game of all time. I think for a lot of people. Which is Katamari Damacy. Yeah, yeah. I have a Katamari license plate on my car. <laughs> so, I am a fan. Like sometimes if he's in my car and we're driving around, I'm like, I can't believe I'm driving this car with Keita in it. And like the license plate is K-A-T-A-M-R-1. I, <laughs> I have this image like the world that he occupies is like everything has eyes and says hello. Totally. And there, it's like this... I don't know. He is a, he has amazing imagination. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I saw a presentation that he did at um, Game Developers Conference yeah. a couple years ago about the uh, about the playground designs that yes. he wanted to do, which looked amazing, but no American parent would oh ever let their child get on a 
I think it was, was a giant slingshot. It, well, yeah, <laughs> there was a slingshot for dogs where you can like put a ball in it and then slingshot the ball so the dog would go get it. But of course you could also put a child put in a it child or in a dog it. in it. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're really hoping that next year at PlayStation Experience we'll be able to actually build some weird large objects. We're not sure yeah. if we can get it approved and done, but it would be so cool. That's what I, I said to the audience, would you guys climb on this stuff? And they were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah you absolutely. have to sign a waiver. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we'll get it done we'll see tell me a little bit like about what your week sort of looks like because you're kind of living in two worlds there's yeah. kind of the austere ivory tower of academia <laughs> and then there's making games with uh you know making games with Kei Takahashi and you know doing stories about uh, the moon a bird yeah. and an owl so how do you balance those two kind of existences so I have a really uh, slow process for making games so when I started working on Luna it was when I was transitioning back to San Francisco when I made that move um, I worked on the concept for it. We did a lot of painting and a lot of drawing and writing. Um, and Martin did prototyping. We did that for about a year. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just took a year off and were real slow. And as we were working on Luna, we talked with each other about, well, what would the company be like and what would our ideal lives be like? Like basically the way that it works is, I don't want to be at the office every day of every week, mm -hmm. but I want to be connected to the things that I'm working on. So yeah. I'm always thinking about my games, and then when I'm teaching, I'm thinking about my class, and what ends up happening is the students talk to me about my game, and my game goes into the class, and what ends up happening is everything becomes part of this virtuous cycle. Like, I get ideas about how to design games, right, and right. how to play games, and what play experiences are gonna be by interacting with my students, and also, they get ideas about what it's like to be a developer and you know what does it mean to run a business like I'm not just a representative of game design now I'm also a CEO right. and I'm a professor so that means that like I can be a role model that has a lot of nuances and a lot of um, flexibility a lot of people that come into the school are first generation Americans and right. so we get a lot of opportunities to reach out to people who wouldn't normally be thought of as people who go into tech right. or people who yeah. go into games. And so for me, you know, I've, in the last six to eight months, I've worked a lot on initiatives for diversity. Yeah. And one of them is one that was just announced at CES. Mm -hmm. I was here in Vegas at CES helping with the announcement and on a panel with the CEO of Intel. And that's a $300 million initiative yeah. to bring the numbers up. And it, really what they're saying, I think, is if you look across the board at how many women and minorities are graduating from programs in technology and could be technical contributors at Intel, it's about 25% women yeah. say, our number's 25%? No, let's bring it up to that number, right? right? right. That's what you do. Yeah. You just try to get at parity with what's coming out of the system, and then on the other side of it, you try to get more interesting and cool people going into the system right, and keeping right. them in the system. When we were developing the game, we were also developing the philosophy of the company. Mm -hmm. and really talking a lot about what did we see as issues like Martin and I would just sort of sit down and think through like well okay why aren't there more games like the games that we've made in our yeah. careers why aren't there more games like Boombox why aren't there more games like Journey what's what's keeping us as an industry from spending more money on innovative titles and you go well you know it, it can't just be that you have to be a, like a solo lone gun right. like Notch. Like not everybody wants to spend three years <laughs> alone making a game. Like I like people, yeah. you know, I enjoy this. This this whole thing where we talk and yeah, yeah. have the frisson, you know, like, <laughs> oh, have ideas. No, that's a, that's that's a big academic word. I yeah, know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. And so I was like, you know, it, it has to be that we're we're just not engaging a wide enough group of people mm -hmm. and we're not having the conversations that we would be having with people that are not already fans. Yeah. Like, what if we tried to recruit people that weren't necessarily from games? So like one of our first hires was Vikram and he came to us from New York. We stole him from, from New York City. Ooh. Yeah, he, but he'd worked at Microsoft and then at Google and he had never had any experience shipping a game and now he's making an awesome game with Kei Takahashi. We really believe that the ideas behind the games, which are about, you know, they're about having fun and connecting with people, being able to be honest and be who you are. Both games are influenced by these kinds of ideas and those are at the very bottom of the company. They're at the, they're at the foundation which we built everything else on top of. Right. So I do think that the more you put into thinking about those things as a company and as a group of people collaborating, the better off you are. I mean, yeah. there's there can't be a, 
a bad side to talking openly about right. diversity. You know, yeah. that's that's it. Like more conversation about your, you know, hidden biases and the things that you don't not really recognize that you're doing makes it easier for you, you to be a better human, you yeah. know? I mean, yeah. it's it's more about having the conversation be part of the everyday, I yeah. think. So that's it. Just wanted to give a big thank you to Robin for carving out time from her busy schedule to chat with me. And I wanted to know from you all what types of subjects, what types of people should I be speaking to? So leave a note in the comments and I'll see you all next week.